hi guys welcome back to Beanie's Hobbies and in this video we're gonna have a little look at the Corality slicing program see if it's any good compared to a uh, Cura so yeah let's get into this and have a little look now if it's something you guys are interested in getting if you had to head over to Corality.com to be greeted with this page you then go to download section slicing software and you can download the Crowdy Slicer 1.2.3 from their website. Now this slicing software is really only good for Crowdy machines. And if you've got something other than Crowdy, you're obviously best to stick with Cura. But anyway, this is this is mainly going to be for Crowdy. So as I say, if you want that, hop over there, download that. Okay, so once you've then got it installed, you'll be greeted with a page that looks something like this. Now obviously the first thing you're going to need to do is add your machine to it. So you need to go up to the machine tab, you need to add a new machine, and obviously from the list you need to select which machine is yours, then click next. And that will then set up and install everything that you need, you know, to obviously use that, use this program with your machine. So for me, I'm using this on the CR2020. And see my other video that I've done the other day, the reviewing of the 2020 brilliant printer. I would highly recommend it to anybody. But anyway, let's get into this. So, first things first. What we ought to do is load up a model onto here so we can start playing around with it. And that's easily done by just clicking on the load folder button just at the top. Okay, so I have one already ready here. So we shall open that up onto the build plate. And as we can see already, this thing is far too big for my print bread. Print bread? I'm always saying bread. Bed. So all we need to do is we need to scale it down. Okay, and that's done down here on the middle button. Picture of the magnifying glass for scale. And all we need to do is adjust the size. So what we'll do, we'll delete it where it says 1.0. And we'll put in 0.5. So that's going to be half the size. Okay, and once you change one, it will adjust all of it for you. Okay, so now we've got a bit more of a manageable size. That will fit on the print bed. That will then turn yellow to say that, you know, this will print. It will fit on the print bed. Now, this is slightly different, obviously, to Cura. Down the left here, you'll have your start. Well, you've got your basic settings. So you've got your quality, fill speed and temperature your support type the filament you're using and the nozzle size so it's obviously quite simple obviously i'm using a 0.4 nozzle so obviously you just need to make sure that is set to 0.4 if you're using something else you'll just need to change that obviously then we've got your filament size 1.75 we've got your support types we'll come back to that shortly obviously you've got your bed temperature for pla you obviously don't need your heated bed but i'd recommend having that set to 60 degrees your printing temperature, PLA, we know is about between 190 and 220. I generally set at about 200 degrees and had no issues. Print speed is already set, wouldn't change that at all. Now this is your infill, your infill density. Now obviously you can change this, less infill, I mean obviously if you put no infill at all, the thing would just fall apart. You need to have a little bit of infill in there. 20% is normally a sort of a good low number, you can go slightly lower if you want. But I wouldn't recommend going below 10. Um, anything higher, I mean, if you went 100%, this thing would then just be solid, but it would use a lot of filament and take a long time to print. Okay, this is your thickness. I mean, if you, if you do hover over any of these, it will come up, obviously, with a little yellow box there, and you'll be able to clearly see what each one does. Okay. Well, the top one is your quality. And the first one here is your layer height. Normal, I'll show you in a minute, I have, I've started printing this already and I can then, I'll cut over to my other camera in a little while and I can show you, these are the settings that I've used to print this model, 0.1, I mean it's saying high quality hair is 0.06, but I mean I've got it set at 0.1 and the quality at the moment is absolutely amazing. I mean one day I will change it to 0.06 to see what the high quality comes out like, but I mean you'll be able to see from the footage that I'll show you shortly, that 0.1 is absolutely spot on okay so while we're on this page we can just do we can have a look at the support now at the moment 
this is just the normal view mode. So we'll hang on, we'll come back to supports. But what we need to do first is we've got up here to where the picture of the camera is, which is our different view modes. And you can see from that we have all our different view modes we can actually look at. Now the one we want to concentrate on is our overhang. So we change it to overhang and then we shall be able to see anything in red. I mean obviously don't worry about the base and the bottom of his cape. But anything in red here is where it's going to cause us overhang issues. Okay. Now the only way around of getting to this, especially the one under his chin, you're going to have to build the support for it so it's everywhere. If not, because I mean it can't be off the build plate because you know his chin isn't anywhere near the build plate so it's going to have to be everywhere for this model so obviously we can set it for everywhere we have got the option of none wouldn't recommend none because let's like say you're going to have problems when it comes here to his chin and you're also going to have problems when it comes down to the edge of his cape so i want to set this to everywhere okay then what we can do next to that where these where this box is grayed you can click on this and then you can then actually change your structure type now lines, you can just read here, there's no point me just reading what it says on the screen. I'm using lines at the moment on this to save on infill. <coughs> Excuse me. To save on yeah, filament and the amount of time it would take to print. Obviously lines will break well, lines aren't very strong, but for something like this it doesn't need to be strong and it will use a hell of a lot less filament. <coughs> Excuse me. Now down here you can also change the percentage. I mean, obviously, less less percentage, less infill will be. Greater the percentage, more infill there will be. So as you see how I've got it set to 15%, which is sort of a normal amount. I mean, in some places you'll see when I switch the other footage, it probably could have been adjusted a little bit more, but it hasn't, it hasn't given me any issues at all whatsoever. So lines is a really good one if you don't want to have too much support. Your other option is grid. No grid will use obviously will use a lot more support, but it will also use a lot more filament as well. So if you've got something that's quite tricky that you need to support, you know you're best to pick grid. But then again, you can also change the fill amount as well. So as a big piece you're trying to support, you're going to want to up this percentage of the fill amount to support it. If it's only something quite small and you want to use the grid, <coughs> then 15% will probably be absolutely fine. But, I mean I prefer using lines because it doesn't take anywhere near as much getting off okay and like I said that's everywhere then obviously you then got your types of your, your adhesion so I've gone through this before in a previous video on Cura Brim is just going to put a layer around the bottom of the model which you'll see when I switch to the other footage which will help it stick to the build plate and then obviously you've got raft okay now raft is is going to add it will print a base layer down first. Basically, it's going to print it like a raft. And so, if you can imagine a raft, it will print a raft, and then your object is then going to be printed on top of your raft. I mean, I have never had to use a raft as yet to actually for anything that I've printed, and I've printed quite a lot. You'll see when I actually get around to uploading everything, or if you've gone to my Instagram, and I've never actually ever had to use a raft. But I mean, if you hold your mouse over there, it'll come up and clearly state. What the difference is between Braft. <laughs> oh my days, it's getting late. The difference between Brim and Raft. Okay. So that's sort of covered the basic settings. You have then got an advanced tab. Okay, but these will all be preset by the program as to the machine, you know, depending on what machine that you've actually got yourself. So in theory, you don't really need to adjust any of these numbers I mean you can have a little tinker if you want to try and tweak a little bit more out of it but the best thing to do if you're just stuck on what does what and I'm not going to go into the depth of everything because this video is going to go on for hours but if you just hover your mouse over the top of each and every one it will then tell you what each and every one does okay so that's that's the easiest way of doing it and that is rarely you can then actually if you wanted to you can open up your expert settings Okay, but most, obviously, like I say, most of these settings you will find under the Advanced tab. These are just a few more settings. So in here you can obviously adjust your skirt settings for a route for when it prints the first line. And, you know, this you can go into a bit more... Like I say, you have got all of these settings already without really having to touch any of these. Basically, 
Creality Slicer is a very slimmed down version of Cura. It's, it's basically Cura that's been tarted down rather than up, shall we say, but it is a lot easier to use. It's very, very, very simple to use. Okay, so we've got our, we've got our model ready to print. We've selected our layer height. We've selected our support type. We've selected brim. And if you want to go into the settings beside brim, you can then change the amount of lines it will print around the bottom. Obviously, the more lines you have, more chance it will have a sticking. 20 is a good number. I mean, I have gone up to 30. You can go up to whatever you want to, but there's really no need to go above 30. Now, as you can see, as I'm playing around and fiddling with all these buttons, this little bar up here keeps changing. And every time I'm making an adjustment, it's then calculating on how long it's going to take to print this model. At the moment, it's now saying 19 hours, 18 minutes. I mean, these are just rough guys, but as you can see, it's very similar to Cura. Once, once you've done your slicing, it'll then come up to say, but this one, it will come up and tell you before you slice it, before you, sorry, before you save it, on Cura, you have to slice it before it will tell you. With this program, it will tell you before you then commit to saving it, if that makes sense. So you get to see it beforehand rather than after. Okay, so obviously they can go back into your view mode. And you can check out your layers once it's loaded up. As you can see, it's going to show me on there where all my supports are going to go. There we are. Because I've clicked everywhere, you can see everything that's marked in blue is the support. So we're going to have one under his chin, one under his cape, and some around his back to hold the other portion of the cape up. <coughs> we know these are just going to be lines. I'm not going to use a lot of filament, and they're not going to be too hard to get off. And like I say, once we're happy with all our settings, once we're happy with all our settings, all we need to do then, up to the middle button, save the toolpath, obviously put your SD card into your computer, save the toolpath to the SD card and take the SD card over to your machine, plug it in and start your print. And that is it, that is all you need to do, like I say, very basic, very easy to use program. Most everything is all preset for you. You might just need to adjust adjust your bed temperature because when I first started using this program, it set it to four, it set it to forty rather than sixty. So that's probably the only number you're going to have to change. Then obviously your layer height, you might want to change that. Mine was set to 0.15, so I've changed it to 0.1. Like I said, the next time I use this machine, I'm going to change it to 0.06 to check out the best quality that can possibly give you. But like I say, when I shoot, I show you the other the other footage that I've recorded to add into this video, you'll see the sort of quality that is coming out at the moment using this program, and also the line support as well, which I which I would recommend using, especially on something like this. Like I say it doesn't use anywhere near as much filament, and it's a lot easier to remove, and doesn't take anywhere near as long. So anyway, guys, I'll cut over to that other footage so you can just have a look at that. So yeah, bear with me. All right, guys. So now it's recorded a bit of extra footage of the actual model being printed itself. So as you can see here with the settings that we already had from earlier on in the video, we can see the line supports that I've added. I said I could do with a little bit more of infill, which it could do it's a little bit holy, but it has actually worked. It's actually held the model together fine. And you can see the one there that's going to be supporting his chin. And as you can see, it doesn't use anywhere near as much filament as what grid would do. You can actually see the detailing of the cape there. This is obviously set at 0 0.1 that we set it at. It's coming out absolutely perfect. You know, you can actually see all the writing. You, can actually, you know, just, just just look at the quality of this print. I'd pretty much say that the Creality slicing software is actually very, very, very good. Give it a go, guys. Worst case scenario, you don't like it, you can just go back to Cura. But it is well worth a try.